welcome to this episode of the Arsliff Podcast, Voices in Engineering. Today we are welcomed by fellow Managing Director Nick Schilling at Thompson's of Pudo. We're going to discuss a ground worker's response to remote working, leadership styles, and building trust in your employees. Hope you enjoy listening. So, Nick, welcome to uh, the Arslef podcast. The bar is very, very high, very high, but I'm absolutely confident you're going to nail it. Like the athlete you are, shooting and launching over that high jump bar will shooting be no problem. And launching over that high jump. I, uh, I will take that on. Yes, I will hope to uh, commit to such a high level. So, Nick, a uh, couple of middle-aged guys from the same town, Yep. Almost, uh, almost in the uh, in the same industry. Uh, we work together on on some interesting projects. But before we get to them, give us a bit of an intro on yourself. With regard to Thompsons and myself, uh, we'll come on to Thompson soon. But just give us an okay. intro on yourself first. So myself, I am a forty-three-year-old. Let's be honest, probably near a thirty-three-year-old visually. I am married. I have three kids: two boys and one girl. I really thrive at work. I, I do like to work. Uh, I've always worked hard. I started my career at 16 year old. Um, I think I was on 16 pound a day. Um, I have interests outside of work. Let's mm-hmm. bring that into the equation. Um, I coach two football teams, both mm-hmm. my son's teams, under 16 and under eight. Again, thoroughly enjoy that. I love the... I love the training aspect. I like the, the social aspect with the parents. And I like to see the, the kids improve not only the football skills, but the personal skills as well. Mm-hmm. Um, outside of that, I've recently got into biking. Okay. Yes. Now, you could say that's because it gets you out the house for an hour and a half. And that's exactly what I will say. It gets mm-hmm. me out the house for an hour and a half. Gives me, after, after a, a 10 or 12 hour day, you can have an hour just with your own thoughts so I thoroughly enjoy that at the moment. Um, I do like to socialise, Kev. I don't know if you do as well. Uh, yes, uh, yes, I do like to socialise. And to be honest with you, the past two months have actually been quite uh, quite hard not to socialise. And, and, and I know you probably share the same feelings on that. I do, yes. But I think the world moves in a funny direction. And um, I think we've all got used to the Zoom socialising. Mm-hmm. Um, of which I do have to remember not to take the camera to the toilet. But... Um, Yes, so that, that's that, that's me, Kev. That, that's me. I am who I am. I'm very straightforward. I'm I'm, I'm a local lad from Prudo who mm. lives not very far from there now. Works still in Prudo, and you see what you get, as you well know. Yes, yes, I do. Uh, so yes, moving on. Uh, so Thompsons, tell me a little bit about uh, a little bit about Thompsons. I mean, as, as a kid growing up in Prudo, that's all we used to see is the Thompsons wagons and the Thompson excavators. They're a big employer in the area. Uh, but but tell me where where they are, and and more importantly, tell tell me um, tell the audience where where it's came from and where it is now since you've been in, involved in, in in Thompsons. Okay, so Thompsons of Prado was started by a husband and wife, um, back in 1948, and I've got to have my my cap on here. Yes, it's 1948. Um, they have grown through the family. It's still a family company, 100% owned by the family. We are currently on to the fourth generation. We are specialists in the demolition, the deconstruction, the decommissioning, industrial dismantling. We have a very large asbestos removal division. We concentrate on site reclamation, easy for me to say, earth moving, contaminated land remediation, site clearance. clearance. (laughs) We have a, a very large quarrying and waste disposal site. And we have a few smaller other divisions, which I'll not go into. Um, we started back in 1948, as mentioned before, with a very small team, and we have grown throughout the last 70 odd years into a team of 300 plus. Our headquarters have moved from Prado to Prado. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a fleet of over 100 wagons on the road every single day. You mentioned that before, Kev, you will see them. I think um, sometimes when you fly on holiday, uh, you know, every now and again we fly from Manchester 
and you've been in the car driving back up from your holiday and within 30 to 40 seconds you will see a wagon even that far down the country and it just yeah. means you're home. Yeah, I was driving up on uh, on Tuesday. I came up past Leeds, and uh, one of the uh, one of the most prominent vehicles was a, was a Thompsons of Prudhoe vehicle. Uh, you can't miss them. So yeah, that's Thompsons of Prudhoe. We uh, we pride ourselves in accepting the more challenging of jobs. Um, we we we're not here just to do the the bog standard jobs, although we will entertain them. But we um, we want the high profile demolition city centre jobs. We are entering into a, an exciting sector of offshore demolition in this moment. Okay, okay. As we speak. And we are still the family company that care. Mm. You know, we the, the, the majority of our workforce have longevity. Mm. They, again, with, with the family generations, we have the people that work with us, generations through generations. Mm. Our transport manager at the moment he, his dad worked for us and the transport manager's son is the assistant transport manager. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, there's three generations there. Isn't it? It's one example and that's just one of many examples. Mm-hmm. So we very much are the family company, but we do stretch internationally. It's nice to hear. I think a lot of companies lose their identity the bigger they get uh, over time. They lose that value and that core uh, over time. But it sounds like Thompson's have been one of the, one of the examples of retaining it. <laughs> So Nick, we we've known each other for a long, long time. Um, we, uh, we we share the same the same title um, in in industry um, and in our businesses. Now, I'm slightly ahead of you in terms of time, but I think I've just gone through one of the hardest uh, periods uh, in in my uh, in my role. You got your MD's title and took command of the business just at the turn of the year. Can you tell me how your first six months of uh, becoming MD has been for you? Well, the first two weeks I was in Florida, so that was a lot of computer work by the mm. pool. Mm. Um, again, that, that was just timing, you know, and the family man that I am and the family company that we work for, there was never a mention of me not going on holiday. Mm. Um, so that first two weeks whilst abroad was was not challenging because the team around myself know exactly what they're doing. You know, I, I've got a fantastic team. Uh, we've got a fantastic team around us. And the challenges we meet all as a team, so it doesn't land on my shoulders directly. You know, there's decisions to be made. Mm. But I involve all parties in all decisions. Mm. Uh, I know I'm the final one to take the blow and make that decision. So the first few weeks were great because I got a bit of a suntan whilst doing work. Of course. Um, I might put a little bit of weight on in America as well, Kev. I, I, I can't remember. Um, Your beard hides I, it, Nick. Your beard hides it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so we returned. We had the Christmas break. Uh, we shut down our company for two weeks. Everybody, mm-hmm. you know, we, we, unless we have a, a very important job to do mm-hmm. over Christmas to, for a very important client we are more than happy just to shut the whole thing down. It's not about profit. It's not about keeping things going. It's about giving everybody the deserved break that they intend to have at Mm. that time. Um, We came back. We had an extremely busy January with regards to tendering. Um, Again, straight in at the deep end, but having the team around you makes it so much easier. Mm -hmm. Um, We then, I don't know if you went into it as well, but there was a thing in March where the country decided to stop. Yes. Yeah, yes. Do, do you recall? I do, yes. I remember having several discussions with you at the time. Yes, yes. And again, the approach we had as a company, there's, there's four or five of us on the board, and we, we sat down, we, we were talking through the night on the Monday as the decision came through. We all had a different take, but we all had the same beliefs of what we wanted to achieve, mm-hmm. which was... We didn't want to lean on the government. We wanted everybody Mm. to be safe. We wanted to commit to our clients where we could, if we could, safely, Mm. and absorbing everybody's safety right the way through. We had an extremely busy and proactive approach to where we were at. Mm -hmm. Um, Not once did I ever feel not backed between clients and the in-house team. And for me, if, if, I, if I step back now and look back over the last three or four months, 
it has promoted how good a team we have at mm-hmm. Thompson's. And that's right the way down from top through to bottom. Not mm-hmm. that we call top to bottom, right the way through from A through to Z. That's a better mm-hmm. phrase that we should use. And it's highlighted that for me, which makes the role easier and more enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I have, But again, with regards to Thompson's and my approach, we're going to come up against something in the next three months. We'll come up against something next year. And it's, it's facing it head on. Mm. We don't, you know, there's, there's no putting our head in the sand. It's, it's there to be dealt with and we will deal with it. Mm. That's one thing that I, I actually uh, have commented on a few times internally here at, at Arsenal. If you're never going to be in a position where uh, everything's plain sailing. No, there's a, there's that's a new the saying. That's the industry, yeah. And there's a new saying actually that we, that we use here. Uncertainty is definitely the new certainty. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I like happens. that one. I like yeah, that. yeah, you can write that one down if you want. Um, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, and it's having that, almost that, 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 that forward-looking approach to, to set the company up to be resilient. Yes. It's never going to be the same again. It's never, it's never going to be consistently the same either. You're always going to be in a period of change or one market will be up, one market will be down. So, yeah, we, we talk about it regularly now. Coming back to the, the, the issues in March, the coronavirus um, lockdown, what was the single biggest challenge that you uh, faced as, as Thompson's? Not you personally, but you as Thompson's faced. As Thompson's, casting my mind back, it was that, that fine balance of ensuring safety for our operatives, mm. our team, committing to the opinion of the client, mm-hmm understanding the government guidelines mm-hmm. which were like our wagons extremely grey mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and that's mm-hmm. not a, that, that's not a slur against the government mm-hmm. because they they had the world or the, the country to think about it was it was making sure we didn't have any loopholes where a single person felt they were being forced to work yeah no we didn't throw that into the mix we we took personalities we took individuals on board mm-hmm. we we tried our very best to keep the whole thing moving forward in a safe manner attempting to keep everybody happy mm-hmm. and that's a challenge that you have throughout that's not just covid mm. you, you do that on a day-to-day basis mm-hmm. um but it was heightened with the covid and i, I do believe that the team did a, a, a phenomenal job i think for the first six weeks i did nothing but praise people yeah within the internal structure because I felt they were they were thrown into the mix and they all came out of it with with such a positive outlook. One of the things I want to drill into a, a little bit um, is, uh, is there a secret formula that you apply for your business development uh, in your daily business? I've always looked and everybody else in the office, outside the office and in the bigger wide world. And I've always tried to take a lesson from them, whether it's positive or negative, mm. i.e. I would like to act like that. Or I, I can see why you act like that, but I won't act like that. So mm-hmm. I've always tried to develop those skills personally. I am um, a firm believer in, I want to do this job for you and I want to do the next job. I don't want to make a million pound on this one. I'd rather do 20 jobs and make a nice little income because we've all got to make profit. It's not a nasty word. I don't want to. I don't want to disappear. You know, I see some of the main contractors, and they'll they'll delve into a, a sector such as Newcastle, and you notice if someone mm. new comes in, yeah, and mm. they're in and out. <clears throat> they're there for that job and that job only. I've always had the firm belief that I would, I'd take longevity over a massive profit, yeah, on any single case. Um, and I've always tried to be friends with people. I don't. I don't want to fall out with anybody. I've got no interest to be the – one of the things when I first started and you first started, there was a lot more aggression. Now, I'm not saying that's disappeared and people need to be told what they need to do and there needs to be direction and leadership, but I don't do it in an aggressive manner. I never will. I never have. Mm. Um, and, and it works. You know, I think, I think you get a lot more out of people. If you offer mm. them respect, time, mm. a, bit of, a bit of hearing, it, it, it just it goes a long way. And they enjoy, I don't want anybody to come to work to feel under pressure. Mm-hmm. You know, pressure comes with the role, but I don't want to put them under additional pressure, pressure by the way that I, I react. Let's talk a bit more about the culture that, uh, that's in, um, in Thompson's, please. So yes. 
talked a bit about uh, how you lead and uh, let's talk a bit about um responsibility and trust do you do you, do you see that as being vital to um having a proactive and a responsible workforce trust is you, you the first day you're at thompson's and again this comes from the thompson's family it's not it's not me you you walk in the door with trust it's for mm. you to lose um and i'm very i'm a very trusting guy personally i like um, that it's for you to lose i'll write that one down nick no oh, i like that one it's in and out isn't it it is it's, it, it is and we do trust our people you know we're we very much promote within very rarely do we go out to the marketplace for managerial positions down over mm. we look to promote within we we want people to succeed you know the thompson's mm-hmm. ethos is they succeeded from the very first day and they're more than keen to push people through such as myself mm-hmm. and if mm-hmm. the trust you know you you walk in with that trust you you don't have to earn the trust but you need to keep the trust mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and a company of our size a bit like yourself, you can't be everywhere. No, no. You know, no. So you forward that trust and responsibility down to the next line management mm. level. That gets passed down. And I firmly believe that we have trust right the way through the company. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What is a typical day for you uh, in Tom? What does it look like? My alarm is six o'clock, but I can't remember the last time the alarm woke me up. Mm. Um, I will have a hundred phone calls. Mm. I will have 150 emails. I will have, yesterday as an example, I had four site meetings for new jobs, Mm. one to assess a current job. I had a meeting with the HR director for an hour to go through various things, improvements, more Mm. so. I had a meeting with our commercial director for 45 minutes to go through various commercial matters in an overview. I sat down with the same director to come up with some operational meetings that we're going to set up. Um, just and that's basically because of COVID. We feel a few things have missed, um, missed been missed out of recently. Just just mm. get-togethers, really. Just you know, mm-hmm. this is where we're at. That's what we're doing. And I'm very much an open book management style. I don't want you to know a little bit and someone else to know a little bit, and then we'll put the jigsaw together. Mm. I would rather everybody knows everything. And they've all got the roles and responsibilities, and there's mm. nothing lost in the gaps. Um, so my day normally is a whole host of everything, mm. from from controlling the pricing of the tenders that go out to client liaison to the site visits. And again, when I go to site, I, I do have a, a contracts management role on, but again, there's already a contra- contracts manager involved. Mm, but mm. I'm there to to see the client, to see all mm. of the boys, and every mm. single boy I acknowledge and wave and see. Um, and it's really just keeping it going. And then at some point, about six o'clock, you'll finish off with a few emails. I then see the family. I'll then dive into another couple of emails. I try not to, and I wish I wouldn't, but you cannot help yourself. Mm. And eventually, at some point, you will mentally switch off. And then you're prepped ready for the day again. And what I have incorporated recently, Kev, is a little bit of exercise early doors. Mm-hmm. You mentioned yeah. that. Yeah. So, yeah, that is the day. And it's, it, it, it carries on Monday through Friday. We, the weekend just gone, we had an emergency demolition for one of the councils, of which that is... You, you don't have to think about it 24-7, but it's always in the back of your head. Mm. There's always a phone call. It was only 20 minutes up the road, so you'll pop up and have a little look to see how the boys are going. And again, not to, not to stick your nose in, but to offer the support of, yeah, I know you're working the weekend. I thought I'd pop up and just see how you're going. Every mm. now and again, you'll purchase a, a batch of Sarnies for them. Um, I didn't because I'm on a diet, so that means they're on a diet this weekend. It's good leadership. And, yes, thank you very much. Yeah, I think it's all the way across the board. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And... Yeah, it, 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 it works like that. It's in and out. Every day is different. Yes. I can't remember a day when, in your head, you'll... I don't necessarily prep. Every now and again, I'll do notes for the following day. But mm. in my head, I'll do it more so. And there's never a day where I'll get all of that done because of the, the curveballs that the construction industry will throw at you. Mm. And having an organization that employs over 300 people and has 25 live contracts going at any one time. Mm-hmm. So that, that that's my that's my day. 
moving on, moving on. Um, Newcastle is uh, is is a, is a big part of my upbringing, obviously, and uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's where you currently uh, live. It's a pretty special place to work, in my opinion. I, I do enjoy the contracts uh, and and the contracting up there. And we've we've done some uh, some rather interesting schemes recently. One of which has been shortlisted for an award. Has it, Kev? Yes, the Gibraltar Rock scheme. Did you know that? I did, Kev. Yes, I think you mentioned it to me. Yeah, um, so congratulations. We're, we're, uh, yeah, no. Well, uh, you know, you will be uh, joining us at the award ceremony. Uh, hopefully, we'll win. Where I'm going with my opening lines there was: um, how, how valuable do you see um, business relationships to you personally? Business relationships mm. are everything. You know, I, I I'll ring the the people that are in a similar position to ourselves, and it's for a chat. It's mm. not for any specific. You know. I rang a colleague, if we call him a colleague, the other day. We have a multi-million pound job going at the moment with them. And I rang him to discuss not that job, just to see how he was going, to see how COVID was in, Mm. to see if he had any problems. I'd heard a a couple of things going on with this, that, and to that. And it was a half hour. And we mentioned Hexham in passing. You know, because he's got his site management team, which I've got a relationship as well. But I've got we've got our site management team and they're running that job perfectly. And it's, it's, it's just nice to just call in. But I do think Newcastle is very unique in that aspect mm. that because of the size and because there's not many people jumping in and out, although people do try, you've got a relationship there with the same people. Mm. And every now and again, they will move company to company, but the relationship still stands. Mm. You know, it's Nick from Thompson's, it's Kevin from Arshleff. You, you ring those people, mm. and I do think Newcastle. Well, I hope Newcastle's unique in that way because it's a pleasure to be involved with it. Mm. Yeah, we uh, we we enjoy our work up there. Kev, come back anytime. Let's go back a little bit in terms of leadership. Yes. And you mentioned when you went on the site, um, or when you go on the site, do you find it a challenge to step back and allow decisions to be made by others? <laughs> We have a, a weekly setup with our commercial team mm. of which I made myself a gag just this week because it was my meeting. It's not my meeting no more. And I, I, I do, I get, and I don't think the team take it in any sort of negative way. I'm just very keen, but mm. I did make extra effort on two zoom meetings with the team just this week to to step back mm-hmm. but i have found that hard but it is it, it has to happen for not necessarily for myself but for the the boys coming through mm. they have to make their own decisions they don't need me interrupting mm-hmm. constantly and it, I, I, I have found that hard but i've also found it enjoyable when i step back because mm. i can hear other people talk as opposed to myself it's a leap of faith it is a leap of faith. I do. Yeah, I agree. Nick, curveball yes, time. Me, f- me favourite time. Your favourite time. For the benefit of the audience, this could go in any direction. Um, literally do not know what Nick's going to say, but we'll, um, we'll edit if we need to, but uh, hopefully we won't. Um, we'll give it a shot. Nick. Yes, sir. First job you ever did. I used to cut grass for my dad's rich friend. I got paid £20 every time I did it. I did it every day of the week. Rich friend? Not called rich, Mm. but a a fairly wealthy friend. Okay, okay. Yeah. I I loved it. I loved Mm. it. Mm -hmm. Was it seasonal, Nick? No, 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 not for twenty pound a hit. It was there all year round. <laughs> Hold on a second. At the start, you said when you started at Thompson's, you got paid sixteen pound a day. Yeah. 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 Why didn't you stay? Why didn't you become a gardener? Um, because I, I, I don't know. Now that I think about it, I don't know. I've never enjoyed gardening. I just really like that. It was on a bank, so I used to. I had a row, and I used to let the lawnmower go and play around with it, and it was it was almost like a good workout. <laughs> um, what is your favourite album? 
Wow. Music. Mm. Curtis Stegers. You're all that matters to me. <laughs> Literally do not know what that is. <laughs> You've never heard of Curtis Stegers before? No. You're all that matters to me. The ground that you walk. Ooh. Wow. I've never heard that before. No, um, I haven't. That, that's, that's more nostalgic. Mm-hmm. Um, if I had to put my... Oh. Take that. Take that. You're never going to forget those sort of songs. No, 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 no. My, my other question on that line is what would be the first single that you ever bought or the first album ever bought? Mine was Uzi yeah. 9 Millimeters by Arnie the Terminators. <laughs> If you remember that song. Um, Nobody <clears throat> remembers that song, Kevin. <laughs> so we're in the same like <laughs> <laughs> I also bought in the same, uh, I think it was in the same week, uh, from HMV in the Metro Centre, Do the Bartman by Bart Simpson. Um, so yeah, uh, that was You my were a little bit behind me. You see, can you remember the video shop in, on Pretty High Street? I do, yeah. Also sold fishing equipment. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> yes, it did. Um... I bought Tears for Fears, Seeds of Love. That was my first little single. You're a romantic guy. Deep down, I'm just one big heart. That, that, that is that's so endearing. Yeah, that, that's who I try to be. That's who I am, sorry. I don't try to be that. Natural. <laughs> I'm going to give you my favourite films, top three, uh, and then I'd like you to give the audience your favourite films. Top yeah, three yeah, for me, yeah. Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters 2, and The Blues Brothers. Wow. Um, wow. And you, you said that out loud, didn't you? Yes. Combined, I think I've seen all three of them films combined probably about 400 times. That's, and that's why I love film. If, when you love it, you watch it over and over again. Mm. Okay. I like and I love and I watch over again. Um, I love a little bit of Team Wolf. Okay. Mm-hmm. Love a Team Wolf. I love a Back to the Future. Obviously, it's a Michael J. Fox Fox Mm, theme mm, with mm. regards to Back to the Future. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, there's two movies that squeeze in here. One, again, Nostalgia, Can't Buy Me Love with Patrick Dempsey, which is a very unknown movie. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot of of fond memories of that. Um, But I'd throw in Usual Suspects. Okay. um, Because you go to the movie and you come out going, wow. And everybody loves a wow feeling. Yes, 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 yes. Biggest influence on your career? Oh, well, I've only had one career in theory, mm. or one, one path. So it would have to be the Thompson family. Mm-hmm. John Thompson, John Thompson Jr. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, they have allowed me to grow within. So mm-hmm. they would be the biggest influence. Tell me your best moment in your career so far. My best moment? Yeah. Wow. You like the wows, don't you? I like, I'm wowing you today. Ah, yeah, best moment. I don't mm. think I've had a best moment. I no. thoroughly enjoy everything we do. I really do. I, I, I quite, I, I like to wake up and get it on mm-hmm. and, and make the most of everything. So I don't think there's been a particularly wow moment. Mm-hmm. Um, you could go back to the biggest payment you've received, the biggest contract you've received. Mm-hmm. Um, every day, put a smile on the lads' faces if I can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's Good. where I'm at. Yeah, there's, there's no particular moment, Kev. There, there really no. isn't. No. I wish right, the could have answered that. <laughs> we're going to wrap up soon. Um, oh, wait, do, do we have to? I think we do, yeah. Unfortunately, we do. But we'll, we'll, we'll schedule in a part two. I think the um, last question I've got for you um, yes, is if you could choose between a tank and a monster truck to drive every day for the rest of your life, which one would you choose? Monster truck. Yeah? Yeah. Let's drill into that. Why is that? in America. Did you? Yeah. It was trucky and monstery. Um, with regards to a tank, there's just too much, there's too much potential danger mm-hmm. if there was like a leftover rocket in. I, I think mm-hmm. that's what they put in there, or maybe it's bullet. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not there to be aggressive. I don't mind driving a big, flashy, huge car, mm-hmm. but I don't want to be aggressive in like some sort of green tank. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I mean, what, 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 what a stupid question. <laughs> I can't believe I give that an answer. <laughs> Nick, it's been a pleasure. Hopefully the audience have, uh, have understood a little bit more about Nick the character and Thompson's. Let's and uh, so, we'll, we'll see you again soon in, uh, in a future podcast.
It's been my pleasure and thank you very much for being the perfect host. Thanks for listening to the Arsenal podcast, Voices in Engineering. If you've enjoyed this episode, head over to our website, www.arslift.co.uk to discover all about who we are and how we work with our valued clients. Never miss an update on a new episode when you subscribe to our podcast feed. If you found value in our conversations, we'd also appreciate a follow on LinkedIn. <laughs>